I need to get out there more. I'm getting too much stand-up comedy. Do you think? I think you can get, should give it a try if you think you. I mean, if that's something you want to do. Do you think I could do like I, action movies? <laughs> I think if you wanted to do it, really wanted to do it, you would be able to. But I think you really know how to inspire people, and that. That's true. Do something along the line because like, you know how like to get people to step like out of the box. Like an Anthony Robbins type. Well, yeah, why not? Yeah, uh, that's true. Why not? Mm -hmm. I didn't even think that. Yeah, why not? I thought maybe because I wasn't big. Like gi he has gigantism, so it, it helps. No, oh, I know. To it doesn't matter how big you are or anything. So I could do that. Uh, what about politics? <laughs> well, I guess I really wouldn't want to see it going. <laughs> that's <politics>. one thing. <laughs>
<coughs> I gotta go watch The Real Desperate Housewives of New Jersey. It's just called The Real Housewives of New Jersey. <laughs> They're not desperate. Not on the point channel, it ain't. Rule number four. Cadillac, Camaro, Corvette. You uh, traded your caddy in for a Prius. Yeah, I really need a change. Big time. Please remove the medicated hemorrhoid pads from your left pocket, sir. And most importantly, rule number five. Once a Guido. Shh, be quiet. I don't want to wake my mom. Shh. Always a Guido. You're going to be somebody, man. You are awesome, man. You were the shit back then. <laughs> Thanks, bro. <laughs> no problem, man. Do your thing, baby. You're right. I got a man up. Huh? I got a man up and grab the balls, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. I told you guys, don't be disappointed. Go and uh, I don't know where it's premiering. I don't know if you can get it on iTunes, but go to the website. Tell them you saw it on this show. They're sponsoring us, so if you support them, we get a lot of numbers to them. Maybe we'll get some of the actors to come in. I would love to get the grandmother and uh, I think his father so or his uncle. We'll get those two guys and the, the one guy on the street that's drinking the 40 ounces. Of this is where I do my intro. What's happening, everybody? It's Michael Andrew alive in Triple Cross Studios. We're back again for a very special uh, Mother's Day special. Michael Andrew alive with my mom, Henry Andrew, uh, somebody I love to death, the backbone of CKO, doing so much for everybody, just unbelievable to her sons and her family. So I figured we'd bring her on. We'll talk. Uh, I know it, you don't want to even get in front of the camera but because you're doing it for me mom and this really is going to convince them out there to endorse me to share this to like it to subscribe to it and when I become a mega superstar this will be the fundamental training that I did so I'm just working it exactly like that so let's start how we always start take deep breath in do that wall guess and breathe mom Say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. Okay. It's a pleasure to be here. So, um, you're obviously my mom. Is there anything that you feel is unique to me? Because I feel like I'm different. We have four boys, right? We grew yes. up uh, Ninth and Bloomfield in Hoboken, New Jersey. So, a lot of boys, a lot of energy in the house. It must have been just like destruction. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Dylan has yeah. one boy. Imagine yeah. there was four Maxes tantruming at mm -hmm. different times, destroying things. It must have been just an absolute uh, a ton of work. Well, it was chaotic, but it was wonderful. Did you enjoy Best it? time of my life. Really? Yes. Yeah, fantastic. The, the meals were fantastic. I mean, you used to cook every day. You used to have just different meals. It was incredible. I mean, the amount of, do you remember making uh, the little eggs in the morning, slicing toast? Oh, yes. What's that well, called? You ever have uh, a soft boiled? A soft boiled egg, that's right, and yeah. I had little cups for them. Yes, and little egg cups. You just throw the egg white out. Back in the day, <laughs> we used to eat the egg yolk. We didn't even think the white was food. Then we went through that period, the most idiot, well, just trying to get big, eating dozens of egg whites a day, yes. throwing yolks out continuously. That must have killed you. No, I mean, you know. When we switched over the diets, you didn't feel that was a tough food being such a part of our lives. It was a big part of our life. It really was a big part of our life. But I wish I knew now. I wish I knew then what I know now about, you know, what, you know, cutting out the sugar and the fat and, you know. Yeah. As you remember, I used to have a lot of baked stuff, a nice. lot of, you know, cookies, all the good so stuff, the you know. Cake yeah. On Sundays yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Be yeah. Cosmos. Yeah. Yeah. There's Dylan's phone ringing yeah. again during our Mother's Day special. <laughs> again, the executive producer okay. answering text. Oh, look, TMZ's on. Dylan, this is a serious show. All right, let's take that again. What's happening, guys? Michael Andrew Alive, the podcast with the most professional... <laughs> Uh, producers <laughs> in the world. <laughs> We're here with my mother, Anne Marie Andrula, somebody has just been 
just unbelievable support, Mom. I, I think if I if I murdered somebody, you probably just would defend me to the death. Like, there's nothing I could really do wrong. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. It's this, true. this is the type of mother you need. <laughs> uh, just unlimited support for, for me all the time. How was I as a, a small child? Because I don't remember. Say well, me, under six years old. So at six, when do you go to... When do you go to preschool, pre-K? I think it was around four. Four years but, old. But yeah, but you had a tremendous energy. I remember yeah. in preschool going for the first day, asking to go to the bathroom, and then immediately walking out of the building. But you say that didn't happen. Well, I don't remember it, but you know, there, I don't remember like I used to remember. I, just, I'm I so, think I just left school, yeah. went home, and then I was like, okay, I'm not, because it was an option to go to pre-K or not. Yeah, so it I was, just made yes. the decision. I didn't want to go. Yeah. And then kindergarten. I talked to you about this. I really, it's not a big deal. I threw a fit in kindergarten. I mean, now that I see Max all the time, uh, our Dylan's son, you could, you're just going to get temper tantrums. It just happens. Um, so I guess, but how, how was I at that age besides throwing a humongous temper tantrum? Oh, no. You were always school. a very sweet little boy, but a tremendous amount of energy. Really? Yeah, and I had because I feel like I'm low energy. But no, you had a lot of energy. Really? You had a lot of energy. Yes, yes. What did I like to yes. do? Eat. I love to eat. <laughs> um, well, you that. used to love to play with your Lego blocks, but Lego you were, yeah used to well, fight well, a lot with your brothers. You were right. tough. Yeah, I think I because be. you were the youngest. Yeah. I had to be. Yeah. It, it was you good. Were. It was mental training. It was yeah. like <laughs> you just have to survive <laughs> it's like there's you know three beds we got to survive this one out but that's adversity makes you stronger i think ultimately true so i used to play i don't think i had legos i think i had lincoln i had lincoln logs right i had different things than legos right but you had i mean there were we always had legos i, I had just a chemistry kind of set i remember that i used to mix okay. the chemicals together probably illegal <laughs> <laughs> right mm -hmm. i had a uh, radio circuit board set where I used to make things and I also and I think early on um, remember when I started making remote control cars yes I remember yeah that yes yes my wanting to do that and I used to just take the store uh, purchase cars and take them apart and then they would break you would take anything apart and that's yeah. you were like I said a lot of energy I know you would constantly take things apart I the know. things that you so shouldn't fast. though okay I know I know, but it helped me out. Uh, and computer yes. class too. They yeah. used to be like, "Don't go to this section of the computer," and now it's immediately I would just go there and start to change things and see what would happen. Uh, I think, <laughs> for at least for what I do now, it's good because I, I take things apart and try to put them back together. A lot of times they're broken. But A lot of times they just stay apart. Sometimes <laughs> they stay apart. I'm talking about you're talking about things. I don't know. I try to take things apart, Dylan, put them back together better. Okay, so you don't, you're not gonna, I like breaking eggs. I don't like- You're gonna get a ruling from the judge here. <laughs> no. <laughs> Michael Andrew alive, guys. <laughs> I understand how to take things apart. Just not how to put them back together properly. But that's how you learn in life. So I, I thank you for letting me do that, or maybe you didn't want me to do that. Well, I didn't want you to do it, but I didn't have a choice, but. <laughs> yeah. uh, what was the biggest thing I took apart, do you remember? No, I have a radio for some reason that comes to my mind, a radio, yeah, yeah. a radio, when we used to have small radios. They yeah. weren't back small, together? Big. No. I tried to. You got to do it yeah. that way. Yeah. 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 That's what they say. Um, okay. So I have a ton of energy, which I don't remember. Uh, at what point did we start to, we used to go on uh, trips to the Poconos, which yes. is fantastic. Yes. And just great memories there. When we're, when we're in the Poconos, so back in the day, you used to get vacation right for extended amount of time and people used to go away for six weeks we are, yeah around a month or a six month? weeks maybe that's fantastic yeah yeah we were very fortunate six weeks um i just don't think people do that anymore for the most part they're just not allowed to they have two weeks off well i guess a lot of people have two you know working parents and it's yeah. hard it is it's hard, hard. It's not, very not hard. right. You go to Poconos, tons yeah. of energy, great time. Yeah, That's we had ver first very fortunate. Learned about entertainment directors being a, a job because tenement yes. would have 
at the tenement, it, it was a thriving. Wayne Newton owned it? Uh, originally, yes, point. yes. So yeah. he owns this place. Yeah. They're trying to make it like the Vegas mm. of Pennsylvania. Mm. And at this point, we're going when it's like changing ownerships, like the Russians are buying it, the uh, the Japanese are yeah, buying I think it. it was, yeah. All the geese started disappearing, so my father used to tell me that they were eating them. I, well, I don't even see why we wouldn't eat them. Um, oh. But then that guy Kevin was there, and his job was to entertain everybody. So he would do bingo. He would do, uh, what else would he do? Like family feud. And I just thought that was an incredible job, even though he seemed completely like he hated every minute of it. <laughs> I've never seen somebody call bingo out with so much sarcasm and hatred for the kid, the children there. Uh, that was a great time. Yes. This is just allowing us to go through memory lane. We also go to, we used to go to the beach uh, sometimes, maybe when I was super little. Is that true? Oh yeah, we used to go down the shore. So, down the shore, yes. like, where? Uh, well, Brooktown, I mean, yeah, we've yeah, gone Brooktown. to Seaside. I, we used to get houses in LBI. Uh, yeah, well, that was Aunt Rose and Uncle Francis. But that was Aunt yeah, Rose. Yeah, and Cookie and Jack. Okay. Yeah. What about, yeah. we, Daddy used to own a house in some place where? Lenoke Harbor. Lenoke Harbor. Yeah. And what yes. happened? Um, he sold it. Yeah, big mistake, but okay. he sold it. What other buildings <laughs> that we own in Hoboken? <laughs> oh, nothing. <laughs> that we should literally be multi. I should be doing this from like a golden plate of bathroom. Yeah. Precious, right? Precious, the building where Precious is now. No, no, he had, he owned the candy store. He didn't own the building. Oh, he didn't own the building. No, no, no. Okay. Um, no. Then we no. He, he, we house. never, we never oh, owned it. Yeah. Just, uh, yes. and it, it was good because I saw Arlene, Arlene and she showed me like uh, where the grandparents grew up and, and stuff like that, which I didn't even know. Oh, yeah, on 8th Street. On 8th oh, Street. yeah, you didn't know that? No. Oh, I didn't oh, know that. Got, okay. By the time I got there, Mom, I don't know okay. how you dealt with the other kids, but I okay. was just like, I wasn't informed on any of the past history. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> right? Because your parents were born on in Hoboken, no, Brooklyn. Oh, no, no, no. My father was born in Italy. My mother was born in New York. Yeah. Uh, Muffet. Yeah, Muffet. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, the mu my, or Muffetes. I hear all the types of things. What nationality am I? Well, we were Italian. born here <laughs> and, you know, as far as I Italian, know. yeah. Okay. What about, uh, I heard some one time somebody said we were part French. Is that true? No, 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 we weren't. No, no, yeah, Charlene's French. Maybe that's where no, you got I that heard from. Grandma used to lie about oh, oh, your father's uh, mother, yes, she was part French. So I guess you would have a tiny bit in you. Uh, she you. was. She was. Yeah, Christy, don't click the mouse during my Mother's Day special. No, I'm just kidding, sorry. <sighs> They're ruining the podcast. Uh, Michael Andrew here, back with another segment with my mom, Amory Andrew, talking about it my grandparents and this is good because I don't I want to keep the history alive so grandpa which I had I haven't I had never met or grandma uh, he was born in Mofeta she was born in Brooklyn no New York City New York right, City New York City yeah are you kidding me yeah um yeah and she that he made furniture correct yes and his furniture Dylan loves this type of stuff Christy It's good. Good point. We had an audio issue. Dylan, if you saw Dylan loves crap, good things like this, like his work in the house. If uh, I want that thing, he made a bar, Dylan, with like leather. What is it called? Like leather. A condenser. On it. A condenser. Yeah, it has two know. showcases on his side, round ones. You lift it up. It's got the bottles. Has a mirror there. Um, it's perfect for like prohibition mm -hmm. style. We, I didn't realize that was <laughs> what it was for, but it, it's really, really nice. All the furniture he made was fantastic. Uh, he made it in Hoboken as well. Well, he did own his own business for a he very did. short time, yes, okay. but then he uh, lost it, but he, he did at one time. Yeah. Yeah. And then he still worked on furniture? And oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it was yeah. a different time. Yeah. Well, this is, yeah, it was this is post time. World War II. Yeah. They, he came over in because I researched this because I can become my Italian citizen as well which makes me a citizen of the 
the EU, which would, at least I can just go over there and get health care <laughs> if things ever got rough. But when did he come over, do you know? Oh, I don't remember the year. Sorry, I don't remember. No, no, it's fine. Yeah. No, we can yeah. check back on it. Yeah. And they, how did they meet? Did they ever tell you guys the story? No. I don't know how they met. No. Arranged marriage, yeah. probably. No, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. I know that. And what were they like? Not to get too emotional here, uh, but it is Mother's Day special. We might as well get the history. Uh, well, I thought my mother was the uh, greatest person I ever met. You never saw her when she was upset. She was always happy. Really? That's one thing I n remember about her. Always happy. But you don't always think, happy. Do you think she was upset in private? Like with the I, you kids? know what? I really have no idea because she never showed that side of herself. They never fought in front of us. She had the greatest personality. She uh, would do anything for anybody. Um, she was an amazing mother. I loved being with her. Wow, that's nice. That's really nice. And I, you know, I believe they're in a better place. You know, as of rec recently, Dylan and I, I, I believe that. So it's good. It's good to think about them bringing back because it brings their memory back and. You know, all of this is just stored in our perception anyway. Uh, they passed away before I was born, right? Before long, any of us were long, born? Long, yes. Wow. Way before. And this was from different ailments, which was common because people weren't living as long. Um, and then my father's side, his father passed away before I was born. I believe so, but he lived to an old age. But I, yeah, I don't believe. Uh, yeah, no, I don't think he was. I think he was gone when you were born. Okay. Well, not to bring this down, and grandma yeah. was alive. I met yeah. grandma. Yeah. Yes. Uh, At least you had a crabs. grandma. I think yeah. it was like four years old. They're like, here's yeah. some soft shell yeah. crabs, red yeah. sauce. <laughs> yeah. And she actually right. did. She have green astroturf somewhere. Yes, she did in her backyard. Because <laughs> we were talking about, I want to yeah. do that in my yeah. house. Really? <laughs> I remember green astroturf yeah. and eating soft yes. shell crabs. Yeah. Oh, she I used to love to cook. We had great times with her. Oh, yeah. It was so good. That's what mm -hmm. I don't like about this. I oh, don't eat gluten, don't eat mm -hmm. carbs, which, because this is the entire culture. You're basically saying don't be an Italian. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what you're saying. Uh, but when you do go to, at least don't be an Italian where we're from. And then being Americanized, which is, you can make pasta as a, it's the, the back, I, there are so many pasta dinners that I, I remember vividly, you know, Dylan's ha hasn't had my mom's sauce, Christy has, when you do brioche, yes. meatballs, uh, it's just incredible, It's a lot of pride in that. Let's go into, why are we, I have three other brothers, Timmy, Vinny, Joey, right? What, ha how come we're so different? This is like an experiment because they always say, is it nature or is it nurture? You couldn't have four people so different. Well, I believe everybody's born with their personality. I truly believe that. Just instinctually? That I, that's what I believe. Okay, so. That's, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't treat us differently at all? No, like, no. Because, I mean, no. do you think Timmy is was mixed up in the hospital for real? Oh, he was. I know. <laughs> I'm like, who's was. this kid okay. like doing algebra and okay. just hitting the books? He's hitting the books like, I, I don't, I, I would imagine you would if you were in like Hong Kong and they were like, you, you're gonna study, you're gonna get your hands beat. Like he's just, that's all I remember him just looking at books, uh, re reading things. He's basically an accountant when he was two. Well, he was j two. yeah, he was, okay. two, he was doing my taxes. <laughs> <laughs> what that then that came out completely natural was it the year that we were born that's what I try to think of oh I I don't know but I don't know I really didn't do things differently I mean just from at birth we were different yeah because as babies okay. you, you know what about the picture where I'm dressed up and look like a little girl <laughs> what's going on now what one? picture is that uh, I don't know the picture in the in the living room of well, me. Well, okay, no, it's yeah. Okay, I, so I used to like here, long hair, right? And I have a cashmere knit sweater on. Okay, well, we're we used to knit sweaters for you guys. Any sane person that would go in, like, who's this little girl? 
Um, yeah, and I, she used to teach me to knit because my, my Aunt Ro lived on uh, the top floor and I would just go and she would do uh, things with me and teach me to knit. And people don't believe me, but I can knit, Dylan. You can, can you? I can knit. Of course I can. Dylan, <laughs> I suggest we make him. I will knit. Yeah, There's a place in Hoboken. We should bring, we should yeah. bring Ro on and do a knitting special. Yeah, absolutely. Right? I, see. <laughs> uh, I can do. Your I was watch segment. Because <laughs> they, uh, Grandma was a seamstress. She used to make clothes. My mother, yes. Yeah, so yes. we in our basement have mm -hmm. a legitimate factory. Yes, we do. So yes. we don't have it anymore? Don't let me guess. Oh, no, we still, ha we okay, still have so it, yeah. No, it's say, still oh, there. Yes, it's at Finney's house. No. <laughs> Finney's <laughs> collecting things circa like 1920 so that if there's no electricity, we can just yes. start society back up. Uh, yeah, Vinny, he's, Vinny's a super interesting He, he guy. is. I think oh, he's man, awesome. we could do... I love his brain. <laughs> if we can do some... And this is just extremely interesting to me, but my brother Vinny, who has... You say he's... He just has... he Not an, I want to say, anarchist, but, like, just whatever people believe, he's just going to say the opposite. Almost to infuriate you, but it actually helped me because it... I question a lot of things and we always had you know it's not nice to do it at family events but just it, it, it debates about religion you know uh, uh, topics most people would never talk about because of Vinny and there was no silencing this, this boy <laughs> which actually was a good thing you know at the time it seemed like but you know Vinny at the table would be like I think uh, you know <laughs> I don't know about this Bible thing here we wouldn't say it that nicely and which normally that's breaking tradition, is it not? Well, it used to be aggravating, you know, yeah. frustrating, but yep. yeah. But it trains yeah. you. It gets, yeah. well, for me, it was good. So I saw like debates and, and we would have things yeah. like that, especially yeah. at the table, which was fantastic. It was good to debate it. So Vinny loves animals. Doesn't humans, not so much. Animals, though, he loves, right? Yes. Um, yes. So in the basement, he was stockpiling animals. First it started with fish. You remember this, yes, of course. Yes. Uh, and he likes exactly how yeah. I grew up. He That's likes predators. That, that was, <laughs> him and I had the exact same childhood. <laughs> he likes the predators, right? He liked yes. Oscars. But those yeah. that wasn't yeah. enough. So yeah. he started getting piranhas. Yeah, then he started getting the ones that like they're like, don't ever release <laughs> release these into the snakehead snake fish. Head, I had those too. But See? then uh, fish not that good. So then we started getting Snakes, mon right? mana well, uh, yeah, snakes. snakes. We'll get to the snakes. Yeah, the Savannah Monitor. We had a whole bunch. I used to just, he used to bring me to the pet store. I used to buy 30 different lizards and then put them in the same cage. Ooh. And then the next day there's no lizards. <laughs> <laughs> For one lizard. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, he had the Nile Monitor that was uh, vicious. This thing, if you could imagine like a small Komodo dragon that's fast with razor blades. And if a mouse is put near it, it it takes it and puts it into ribbons first. That was the most vicious one. What was his name? Uh, I don't remember. No, I don't know. But then the snakes, okay. So we started with s small snakes, and then at some point we had two 14-foot albino Burmese pythons in the basement, um, that, and there was other humongous snakes as well. W and boa constrictor, remember? A boat the, well, multiple. he still he he disappeared. He disappeared into the house. Yeah. My brother Timmy yeah. was so scared. Yeah. He's probably gigantic now yeah. because they just go yeah. in the sewer and they're fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you might as well release them down. But imagine one of those fourteen foot this is stuff you would see in Florida. Uh just enormous. But the, the snake's babies were rare, so he was breeding them. <sighs> so much fun. And then dogs. Okay, our family has been saving dogs since I can, re well, no, we first had Blue Thunder, right? Yeah. No, we had Linguini. Linguini. I remember Linguini. Linguini. Linguini, one of the best dog ever. Took uh, commands in Italian and in English. And when you told Linguini something, she did it. Th that was the last time I've ever experienced a dog like that. It was like, <laughs> Linguini, stay, come. It was a different mentality. Now we baby the dogs, and I heard that, you know, like Uncle Dominic would walk the dog and train it properly. Is this true? Well, when they had their first Sparky, 
that Sparky. was your father and Uncle Francis who trained him. Yeah. So. Yes. Oh, we got to get Daddy on if I could keep him in. He was telling me crazy things on phones that they used to have, not like different, not gangs in Hoboken, but they would be like the, uh, they would all have like jackets and stuff. Is this true? That signified the, like the block they were from. No, I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you said it, I'm sure. Yeah, it was. I got to, yeah. like each area of Hoboken when there was kids, because you got to imagine when I was growing up in Hoboken, this, it, there was not as many kids right and and the kids were sectioned off so we were in our section chris kirko Stephen mm -hmm. demoro and people used to be outside all the time this is the kids won't even remember this so across the street there was four people that looked like shrunken down english people with big hair you know what i'm talking about the four uh, older people across the oh street. yeah yeah they were very nice two yeah Never okay. even said hi to me one time. Okay. <laughs> they had two, it was almost like they're watching TV and whatever I'm doing, they're there. So it was a husband, wife, husband, and wife. Well, they had nothing to do. They were retired and. I know they hadn't, I know <laughs> this is what I'm saying. This isn't yeah. done in Hoboken anymore. No, 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 four, no, no. Four lawn chairs, Dylan. It. Yeah. It's a nice summer yeah. day. We're yeah. just sitting out there. Yeah. We're not yeah. drinking water. Yeah. We're not, we don't have yeah. Powerade. Yeah. We're not doing CrossFit games. We're sitting in front and just and taking in the day. Yes. People couldn't handle yeah. this. Also, sitting out and looking out the window used to pretty much be commonplace. Yes. So you didn't have sure. to worry about losing your kids as much because the whole neighborhood is watching your kids all day long. Yes. And then we used to go down on the church on the corner and play wiffle ball. Remember the Knight Rider car I had? Yes, yes. That's the one thing I still hold a grievance. I had so many amazing toys, Mom. I know. And, and they would gone. be worth the Transformers. Chris Kirko's mom threw them out. Yeah. The Transformers out? Yeah. It's made out of 20 pounds of steel. I could melt this down and probably sell it uh, as lead. Or it was probably pure lead, actually. It's a good thing threw it out. But I had a Knight Rider car. I got it and I pedaled. And it said, hi, Michael. And it had the <laughs> light in the front. This is 1989, guys. You don't even have that today. No, oh, that's, that's a very cool toy. Right? Tool. That's an amazing toy. I had my pet monster. You, what, Max has that? No. No, where, where would you put that in Hoboken? Oh, we had a, huge. oh, it had to go in the basement, and then I had, to, I had to really be like, can we get that out? I would just go up and down the, the street with it. Yeah. Right. So much fun. To be able to drive a car, has Max done that? Not yet. You should definitely well, she do still that. had it. It's a, it's because we'll, we'll pull it out of the basement. No, so uh, trust me, if we still had Dylan, I'd run you around. It would be, it would be in case in, in gold. If we, I'm going to go on eBay and actually get we'll that. We'll find one. We'll get a hold of one for We Max. have to change it to what's going on, Max. They're prob Max. probably fairly dangerous. Anyway, and I don't even care if people don't pay attention or don't watch this, but it's good to relive the ideas. So um, back to my toy collection over there, Vinny Snakes. So Vinny just loves it. I mean, he has a farm now, and he likes animals, clearly. He loves dogs. We always took in tons of dogs. Yes. Um, they were always problematic, lovable. Blue Thunder, I was our next dog. He was extremely intelligent, and I tell people the stories where he would run down the stairs, bark at the door while I was eating, and then I would, oh my, there's somebody at the door. Go to the door. Blue Thunder is not, he's eating my food. And he looked at me as like, you know, he knew how to manipulate me all the time. He would just take food. He didn't care at all. Um, pretty impressed by the dog. Too much energy. Th that dog was bred for like security to be like running around and protect. He, he just, a Doberman, right? a Doberman, a blue yes. Doberman, yeah. rare breed. But he was a pain and we should have known from birth we picked out the most the biggest troublemaker we picked out the puppy that threw the other puppy into poop and we're like we want that one <laughs> <laughs> and then they try to tape his ears up to make him like a doberman and from the first day he wouldn't allow it so his ears one was like this and one was like that so he looked kind of ridiculous then Vinny just started taking he would call me up and say mike bring me a belt <laughs> I'm at like 14th and uh, Willow. And then I would get that there and then he would grab yeah. a dog 
just run around and put the belt on it. All of a sudden, that's a uh, back dog. That was Max. That was Max. Max, yeah. of course. I used to wrestle with Max. Yeah. Tough dog. And then just more and more dogs until it became ridiculous. It's like, you know, it, it became ridiculous. But you loved us so much, you let us do whatever we wanted. Yeah, we had five dogs at one time. Five dogs. Yeah. Four boys, five dogs. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine that? It was crazy. Um, but he loves animals. Anyway, the snakes were crazy. Do you remember when he used to make me get the snakes in Pennsylvania? Or you didn't know about that? <laughs> no, I, I didn't know about that. Okay. He used to make me get the snakes. So there was, um, I think we actually, unfortunately, sorry about this, killed the entire rig ne neck snake population. There's a snake. It's like a garden snake with a ring, usually red, sometimes orange. And little holes and stuff that they would be in, he would take me and I would go take them out. And then he would collect them and feed them to the king snake at the snake house in Pennsylvania. The snake house okay, has 15 foot uh, cobras, just incredible snakes. And the king snake eats little snakes, snakes and he would love to see the Big predator snake. eat the little snakes. <laughs> <laughs> but then he made me grab one in the water and it bit me in tanamint. And then a lifeguard was like, we got to get that snake. He's like, that could be poisonous. You don't remember that? All right, this is sounds very and vaguely then, familiar. He also no, purchased a bullnose python in, in the Poconos, and it got caught in between the sink and the wall. Oh, I remember that. And then he okay. made me grab that one. I remember that because that was not our house. They wouldn't bite me. That Only that mm -hmm. one watermark, is, <laughs> only the one poisonous one that got me that time. <laughs> But besides that, I was pretty pretty much set. I remember, I hate bugs, Mom. I hate flying bugs. Oh, Do you I know, know why? Bugs. No, I don't remember you being like that when you were little. I, I know that. I don't, I'm not yeah. terrified of insects. I just don't like them. I don't remember you being like that, probably, though. I remember gnats being in my eye and like stuff like that. Okay. No? I don't remember you ever being afraid. Uh, no. Especially in Pennsylvania, where you had a lot of that. Oh, man, that was a lot of fun. I don't know. Um, the bugs, me, pretty much covered all that. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Uh, did you tell your mom's story of what my like, Patasic and I did to you? With the June bug that flew into your house? On you Bloomfield there, Street? Yeah, I was there. Uh, well, no, Mike Pettisic, we lived on 10th and Bloomfield together. Uh, he grew up on 8th and Bloomfield. Great guy. I'm, I'm trying to get Mike to run for mayor. What do you think about that idea? Because he's one of the most honest p people he he's he he won't be corrupted, and the old time Hobokeners and the new Hoboken people, he bridges the gap. Uh, he probably would. Good point. And he's tall, and it's <laughs> tough to debate somebody that's tall. And he looks like um, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and I look like Danny DeVito. So Christy told me she's like, remember that that movie Twins? Oh. He's like Arnold Schwarzenegger. I was like, that went there. I guess I'm like Danny DeVito. <laughs> anyway, the he grew up on 8th. We moved to 10th in Bloomfield. So he grew up on 8th in Bloomfield. I grew up on 9th. We got an apartment after college on 10th in Bloomfield. That's at our range. <laughs> right. um, and I always tell Dylan, I like this neighborhood the best. Our block that I currently live, live on now wasn't a good block. It wasn't. It was just too many people. I don't know. We never went there. And we had a big deck the Perkintinos owned the place and the screen door you can go out it was on the second floor and when you kept the light on in the living room and you kept that screen door open this is like making bugs come in he's attracting bugs so that they thought that was extremely funny and every four years I think cicadas are born and die and don't come around for like or is it seven years anybody know any facts it's something it's not every year it's not 13 every year. or something. so cicadas uh, you Seven, couldn't 17 yeah, if you hit a cicada with a, a mallet, the thing won't crack. And this thing's dead for like seven years. It's, it's got one day to live or whatever. And Mike is thinks it's funny to let it fly at my head. And what what happened was I threw the blanket over and it just landed on my head. Uh, out of a movie. So I have a giant bug. And but you didn't know it was on your head. I could feel We knew because we were like, ah. <laughs> this, this goes on all the time. Uh, it, listen, it's... It, it seems like it would be a real funny thing, but it's not, guys. 
Uh, no, they don't bite. No, don't it's not true. There's, no, there's a reason why. Sting. Sting. There's a reason why I don't like bugs. So instinctually, it must be good to not like bugs, right? Because, because of plagues, team. Dylan. Come on, Dylan. When God wanted to hurt the Egyptians, what did he do? Did he send them little, uh, you know, Starbucks cards? They canceled. No, he hit them with the plague, the bugs. It's like, how about I hit you with locusts? Like this, boom, swarm, eat them all up. Native Americans would, would get nets and catch the locusts and eat them. Do you know that? No. Ancient Egyptians should have eaten the locusts. What are you, crazy? <laughs> Got that. That's a lot of food. <sighs> we'll go into that Bible breakdown. Besides that, um, then high school years, I remember being... See, Chris Kirko's family used to take me because Chris was a single child, so I used to go on a lot of uh, trips with them, which good and bad for my development but we used to go to the beaches and stuff and tanamint and my older brothers are worried about weight and doing weight training and stuff so at a very early age I was trying to cut weight um, big time that's why I was like I'll just I'm gonna eat skim milk with rice krispies and toast because there's no fat in any of this so I'm gonna get ripped wrong <laughs> <laughs> wrong that's not how it works um, I got my first job at, Margar at margaritas Remember? Yes, I remember. Okay. Which they were letting me make pizza, which is insane. So I would do the prep cooking. I would prep uh, basil. I would make dough. And I would make um, tomato sauce with two Mexican gentlemen, which <laughs> none of us knew <laughs> anything about Italian food cooking, at least. I used to watch. I was your helper at, in the house. More yeah, than yeah, the yeah. Ones, you right? used to cook. Yeah. I learned. I yeah, was. Yeah, you went. I was you, studied. Yeah. I, I did. I yeah. cleaned up. I was the most girlish, I would say, out of, out of the, the brothers. Right? I'm going to say that for, uh, for one thing about you that I would say is more girlish, but that I appreciate. What's that? Your affection. Now at this age. Okay. Oh. <laughs> See, that's why you have to like and subscribe yeah. this. This, this is going to get like 10 million views. So good. See my affection. I appreciate that, Mom. No, I mean, but you know, a lot of guys won't, especially yeah. you know, I'm your mother. Yeah, it's like, but Bill you know, like that with machismo, too much machismo. Yeah. Um, yeah, you got to do it. it. It's better to do that. You know, we live in and work in such a. We work together. It's it's a high pressure. I I see greener pastures. One thing you can do is not think ever anything's going to change, but we can. Uh, it's a high stress situation all the time. I don't even think it's just the family. It's Hoboken in general, and the idea growing into growing up in an area like this. Our grandparents are coming from one of the most war torn, hostile areas. You know, even grandma, everybody from that section of Italy. Naples was one of the wealthiest cities until World War II, and then it became, you know, one of the completely bombed out, desperate areas. And then let's think about what was happening there a uh, hundred years before that, and a hundred years in, I mean, of the Roman Empire. This, our ancestors were probably maniacs <laughs> um, going through a lot of adversity. And then Hoboken, not that it wasn't, uh, it just is a lot different than growing up in the suburbs where things are, uh, it's, it's just uh, faster here. Everything's faster, is that not correct? Oh, absolutely. You see people, there's traffic, there's, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. you're in it, um, and that's why it's, I need to take those trips, and you guys should take trips when we go to Costa Rica and go, and you see other uh, setups where, where the, everybody's just doing less, which is boring sometimes, but also is necessary sometimes. Oh, absolutely. We need a better culture. Italy, mom, you got to go back to the motherland. How could you not go to, to the motherland? I'd love to one day. Just pick a day. Pick a day. Let's go. Let's go next week. Go to Rome. The Italians there have just like said we're just gonna focus in on eating, <laughs> and three times a day we're gonna eat unbelievable meals, and then your day is pretty good because you're waking up just like us. We used to go to Cosmos and get pastries. Well, guess what? When we're in Italy, guess what's for breakfast? pastries <laughs> and I think it's a 
maybe you could say it's not healthy, but they seem to be pretty healthy. So I don't even understand how it works. Huge lunches, multiple course meals, Dylan, so that you can really focus on no TVs on, no Fox News on while I'm eating my cheese platter. Okay, Dylan, with honey on the side. Or your lasagnetti. My lasagnetti. Okay, no, no, no other distractions here. We're focused in on this food. I, I, and I'll say another great thing about Italy, uh, as far as there's really no Italian food as we believe it in America, because they are extremely regional. These are people that they only eat from their particular area. So if you're in, um, Christy said, Lejanietti's from uh, the beach area in, in uh, Tuscany. So you're gonna have several courses. This is why it's so crazy. When I went to Costa Rica, small tangent, I, I met uh, Michele and he is the president of the World Kickboxing Association. He's from Italy. I'm kickboxing with people on the beach. He stops, he's like, what's going on? Well, we start talking, he's got broken in. He's like, come on down. So you guys just invites me to Italy. I'm like, okay, how about we actually go over there? We go, we do a reboot camp in Venice. We take a train down to, um, so there's Pisa and then the Tuscany's beach area is where they mine all the marble. So this one town, which was called Massa. a Massa, Marina de Massa, is it's paved in marble because the marble quarries are there. So it, it's one of the most beautiful beach towns. Um, their beaches, I don't really like that much, but like as far as they just got marble on the street, the hotel we stayed at, all marble. When it rained, Dylan, you can break your neck. I wiped out. There's just like, okay. Non-stop. It's, it, they're out of their minds. Wow. They have it's no crazy. mats. They don't care if you kill yourself. We're gonna keep it beautiful. Uh, anyway, I was holding onto the railing and sliding across the marble <laughs> yeah. flip flops on. Yeah. How am I sliding right guys, now? Guys are off camera. I'm dead. So Chrissy's talking about time. She almost broke her neck, but they don't care because it's beautiful. <laughs> so this guy comes, the president of the World Kickbox Association, comes, takes us out to dinner at some place there. I think it translated to the Pink Elephant. Hippopotamus. Hippopotamus. Oh, and this I remember the waiter. He was. Uh, like a big flamboyant Italian guy um, and they had this talk this conversation I don't even know what they were saying he had him and his partner who fantastic guys and they ordered a, it was lunch mom I just met the guy in Italy in uh, Costa Rica I knew him for about an hour he gave us a 12 course seafood experience that was so good and finished with this thing called lasagnetti they brought it out on a big pan so they whatever fresh they had langostinos whatever different little seafoods, just a little bit of tomato sauce, and then ribbon pasta finished off, and it was just tremendous. Yeah. I don't know why, yeah, we, we, we need to do that, Mom. <laughs> we need to do a big cookout. Uh, where did I get to this story? I have no idea. But that's regional, so if you were went to, um, when we were in uh, uh, Florence, and had um, brajol on the menu, I was like, I was like, I know Brajol. You, that's like thin yeah. steak you put, in, but not in in um, in Florence at all. They, it was a steak. Actually, the guy was yelling at me because I ordered it. I was like, What are you talking about? And he's like, No Brajol on the menu. No Brajol on the menu. Getting mad at me. And Christy's like, It's right here. And he got pissed off. It's like he yelled at his son in the kitchen yeah. for putting it on the menu. And it was oh, a. Wow. He just gave me a steak. And they have they don't use salt because of a salt embargo in a, uh, in their bread and stuff. So their food is extremely regional, depending on the section. Venice, Southern Italy, and then the American Italian food is just a little bit different. Anyway, if that's not interesting, people, where do you see me, Mom, in in uh, twenty years? Do you think I'm gonna really get up to that? Change the world? Do you think I'm like a Barack Obama type, type or like? Uh, Jimmy found I like I look at people on TV and stuff and I'm like I could do that am I delusional no not at all okay no no I think you have the personality right uh, yeah absolutely like name somebody that's popular on TV Jimmy Fallon <laughs> and I, I think Jimmy Fallon's yeah. hilarious and I don't want yeah, to uh, maybe yeah, he, yeah because no. that is the cameraman there who's and he just got the but I gotta get I need to get out there more maybe I need to do stand-up comedy do you think? I think you can, should give it a try if you think you, I mean, if that's something you want to do. Do you think I could do like I, action movies? 
<laughs> I think if you wanted to do it, really wanted to do it, you would be able to. But I think you really know how to inspire people and that that's true. Do something along the line because like, you know how like to get people to step like out of the box. Like an Anthony Robbins type? Well, yeah, why not? Yeah, uh, that's true. Why not? Mm -hmm. I didn't even think that. Yeah, why not? I thought maybe because I wasn't big. Like, gi he has gigantism, so it, it helps. Oh, I know. To it doesn't matter people. how big you are or anything. So I could do that. Uh, Anybody? What about politics? Well, I guess I really wouldn't want to see you go into <laughs> That's politics. one thing. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Yeah. I, I, don't yeah. Want, I would never go into politics, yeah. but I'll get Mike Pettisich, uh, and then I'll be the secret money man saying, listen, you <laughs> make, make this deal where I'm the only person that can loiter on this block. Like, nobody on this block yeah. can yell at me for loitering. I didn't even know what that meant. Is it hanging around? Is that what that means? Well, no, I thought no it was throwing no garbage idea. in the street. Oh. What? Is no, that what that am I wrong? Loitering is yeah, hanging yeah, around. Is hanging around. Mm, okay. That's it's literally like what you do. Steps. That is literally, I mean, sitting on the church steps. That's loitering. It's Hoboken, though. As long as you know if they're causing a problem. That was good mm. about the growing up. Like we knew everybody in the area, and you kind of knew to stay away from Ba. You know, Ba's right. The guys they used to call them. I, this is what they called them, sheep men. Ba, he used to walk around and ba, ba. Uh, uh, okay, I think I know who you mean. He okay. if you asked them for it. Okay, all right, no, I think I know. Remember, yeah, he yeah, was yeah, actually, yeah. actually extremely wealthy, but he didn't realize, well, he just okay. wasn't psychologically all there. Yeah. You know exactly what I'm talking yeah, about. No, I, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Um, so people like that, Eddie Moe would smell your toes, so you knew to stay away from that guy, although, you know who, who Eddie Moe is? No, I don't. Yeah. He would hang out at Mr. Biggs, and the rumor was that he would give you fifteen dollars to smell your toes. Oh, really? <laughs> I was like, "Where is that guy?" Because <laughs> I want to play video <laughs> games. It's so funny that the the place opened up a burger shop and a malt shop where the old malt and burger shop is. Did you see that? It's on Washington. Yes. Yes. All they need to do is take yes. the daycare and turn it back to yeah. an arcade. Yeah. They used to get yeah. a malt. Yeah. And play video yeah. games, guys. Yeah. This this was yeah. a good lifestyle. Do you understand that, Dylan? Just walk around the block, video arcade. Yeah. My father, hiding silver coins, telling me not to use the special ones. Guess, guess what? I definitely probably put a couple of G's of silver in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, also, I got to thank you, Mom, for allowing us to put in so much martial arts stuff. Like, at one point, we had a heavy bag in our bedroom. And that was no small task because you have to attach it to the, it's a brick wall, right? Oh, when, it's when a, is a brick wall, a yeah. brick wall, so they came in dealing with the thing mm -hmm. where it goes, mm -hmm. it shoots a bullet through it, what's right. that called? What? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, so that was the yeah. first time I did that, and then he, he, it was not a good design, by the way. He put a piece of wood this way, and then one this way, screwed in at the top, heavy bag. And then we had a Marco Laura pad in the basement, which was a potato sack wrapped around a piece of wood, and that's what I used on my knuckles. It's still there. It's still there? Yeah. I should go over there and yeah, practice. It's still there. It made my hands like yeah. bricks. Yeah. B-roll. See, yeah, you have to do this conditioning yeah. too, Mom. That's what the people don't understand. Like, they're like, oh, my hand hurts. Yeah. You got to, you, you need this martial arts and striking. It, it's a full-time gig here, guys. You got to do, you got to put your hands in the rice like that. Um, it was fantastic, Mom. I really, I, I enjoyed childhood thoroughly, you know. I'm enjoying it now. <laughs> uh, I really appreciate the confidence you tell me I could do anything because of course you can. Uh, yeah, I think there's certain things maybe I, I can't play in the NBA. You think so? Maybe. If, I re if say if I worked really hard, you think I'd go to the NBA? I think you could do anything you wanted to, but <laughs> you know <laughs> that's <laughs> what you want from a mom right there. Uh, I think we're going to have to bring you back, Mom. That, uh, I think it's fascinating. Is there anything else you want to talk about? You want to capture, even if it's for us? You want to say hi to a couple people out there? Uncle Louis, Aunt Charlene, maybe they watch the <laughs> podcast. Adam. I had a dream uh, Adam was in it. Oh, really? I, yeah. I haven't seen him in so long. Yeah. My cousins, yeah. they're so tall. What happened? How come Uncle Louis is the only one well, that's all, like all six feet tall? Everybody was tall on my mother's side. Oh, yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. So what? So get to your father. So what are you doing? Don't you like? Why don't you say you're short? 
to daddy and find like somebody who's taller. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. I didn't think of it at the time. <laughs> Like, it's not fair. Adam's yeah, but look at the four wonderful sons I it's have. It's true. Really? Like if I was I'm a little so bit lucky. taller, Mom. Just a little bit. No, it's fine. I don't care. Uh, obviously, but it's just weird that as they're long so as you're tall. Healthy. But then you see, like, Pietro. His yeah, look at his parents. Yeah, yeah. His yeah. parents are yeah. this big. This yeah. kid is literally yeah. a giant. In Italy, yeah. he would that's be. That's true. It, that's where the myth the giant came yeah. from. Like, this kid yeah. is yeah. a giant. Yeah. So you kind of, yeah. like, start asking, is that. His papa is real <laughs> father, but he is because yeah. her mother, it came from the mother's side. It's not predictable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, good nutrition, too. That's why I'm as tall as I am because I'm probably the tallest Andrula in history of Andrulas. <laughs> <laughs> right? In the entire history of them. And that's actually true because North Koreans, when they sneak over to South Korea, the men and the women are six inches shorter than all. So the same exact people six isn't shorter because of nutrition and I definitely had proper nutrition growing up some of the best nutrition ever I think right well I think you should eat more vegetables I did I eat a lot of vegetables mm, yeah. though I did I ate well you always vegetables. willing to eat whatever yeah. you, you would try you things all your brothers it. weren't like that yeah they're crazy yeah. The only, I only thing they wanted to eat uh, macaroni and cheese I, I don't eat yeah. oh. even as a young boy I was like oh, eat Velveeta you crazy oh. Th that so was Joe's favorite. I just made, yeah. let me have butter, right? Made a special mm. butter. We're talking about Dylan. All the burners have things just ready for you. Yeah, you know, stand. the only thing is, are you going to get a pound cake or are you going to get a marble cake? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? You know, uh, my lunch box was just fantastic. I didn't really carry a lunch box much, did I? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I remember making lunches. When did I go to Calabro? And why did Calabro... Get. Calabro was the best school ever. It was basically the first charter school in Hoboken. Yeah, yeah, no walls school. divided yeah. the classrooms. Amazing teachers. And then they're like, ah, you know, Mike, <laughs> we're just going to give you a little taste over here. Send, they sent me to Brand School. No, I That's think you school. had to go to Brand. You know, I no, think no, it no. only went up to I certain. Would, me and Timmy, Timmy went to Brand School too. For yeah. But before yeah. then, they had changed it. Because Joey yeah. went to Calabria yeah. all the, yeah, until okay. eighth grade. Uh, yeah, Didn't but they finish. changed it. Yeah, yeah. Jesse did. Yeah. Mike? Yeah. No. Sent me to brand school. Well, I had no That's choice. That's I learned to fist fight. Yeah. <laughs> I had no choice. <laughs> no, I, I, it's fine. It was good. 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 Really good. Hudson Catholic was a problem. I know I was a problem, Mom. I don't know. I'm a maniac at heart. And I don't think I can be educated in a traditional sense. But today's schooling, like, if I take things apart, I think they would have pushed me more to work at, with electronics and stuff. You know, and uh, computers, I'm fairly, I'm really good at taking things apart, like virtually online programs, putting them together. In high school, I made a Flash movie um, that really impressed the, the instructor. I made an entire movie. Um, Terrence and Philip from South Park. It's inc pretty incredible, I thought anyway. So, sorry I took remote, remote control cars apart. Sorry, Radio <laughs> Shack, for <laughs> returning the things, piece of craps anyway. They didn't have enough horsepower, Dylan, so it was like, how about I put two motors in this thing? Because, <laughs> but as, especially during the next 20 years, when taking things apart and putting them back together and drones and stuff, I'm, I'm your man. I can make a drone today. I don't need instructions. I don't need uh, to check with the government. I just make a drone. Um, besides that, Mom, big things are happening in Michael Andrew Alive. I don't know if you've seen the latest episodes. You, you don't watch No, I you? haven't, no. How could you not watch Well, I don't so have good. voice on my computer, but. Why are you using voice with this computer? Don't I need, oh, I don't know. That's the computer. You can watch it, it on your iPhone. Me. I can. We'll set it up for you. I'll set okay. It up. You got to be watching Michael Andrew. Maybe it's better if you don't. I guess <laughs> somebody's watching them. We had some big hits, Dylan's, in three days, and video isn't as popular as the audio. Audio is way more popular, but we haven't gotten the statistics from iTunes. Two thousand views, I think, in three days. Wow. Either that leaked over, or Christian. I did put "How to Be a Rock Star" in the title, so that definitely influenced it but they watched the, most of the episode Kristen's as of today which is crazy was over 5,000 wow. and 
you're talking about Joe Rogan for video usually gets about 2,000 in that amount of time because most of it's audio podcast people listen to it you have to sit down and listen to me for an hour but we started really good because we started the episode off about talking about um, and this will be good for the people to click back about how babies in a womb you can talk to them like they're taking in the input and then the number of people that took my class like Nicole I'm sorry she's watching this she's just she's pregnant again you know what I'm talking about in the class no super rip Nicole's been with us for like 10 years she has a little boy uh yeah okay I didn't know that yeah, wow she's pregnant again a couple uh it's like three months so you okay, know it's no, the I time know. actually I usually know before most family members when women are pregnant because they'll tell me before class and then I am like okay there's I'm gonna start talking to this baby now like a, an adult and I do that so they're coming to class over and over and over. I'm talking. Allison and Pat, remember when they had their baby? Yes. Oh, she yeah. came the yeah. entire pregnancy. Oh, would bring that yeah. baby to class, put the yeah. baby there, and would just go to sleep because it, it loved. And I'm violently yelling. Dylan knows I'm talking. Blasting music. It's the most. The baby's just like, go <laughs> to sleep. It'll, and you take it outside, and it's not happy. So I've mentioned that there's a lot of people. A lot of babies out there. I've already branded michaelangelo.com <laughs> into their minds. So in 20 years, when they're watching it on their contact lens computers, they'll they'll be like, "All right, let me go to michaelangelo.com." I don't know why. <laughs> I just have to do it. Uh, then I'll let into a nice one. So I don't want to keep mm. you all day, Mama. I know. I really appreciate it. Well, let's sum it all up. I can do just about anything if I believe in myself. Absolutely, anybody can. So anybody but especially me yeah so if if I try to do anything I'm gonna get there yeah I'm amazed at the man that you've become yes somebody clip that audio out number two my affection uh, it's not a weakness it's no. it's a quality because Dylan would yeah. say listen Mike you're too sensitive you know you're too sensual and I say, I don't think so. I think that is not, you know, he says I should be strong on camera, but I think I should show my sensitive side, right? I, I think that's, yeah. I think I that's think what important. I, why I excel at teaching the classes because I'm so sympathetic to everybody that I know how they feel to the point where I, I can predict how they're going to feel if I do this or that. Um, would you agree with that? I, I totally agree with that. As a fact, um, Nazish, she said she found that, well, you and Joe, and actually Tim, because Tim was there, were amazing that somebody else would have been full of themselves, but you guys were so no. sensitive and yeah. treated everybody and inspired people, and yeah. I thought that was a very nice compliment. Like yeah. Yeah. Have a well, some people would. Andrew yeah. Alive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. good times. Good time. I mean, that's. I, at first, I'm probably sure I didn't do it, but I, I got that a lot from Chris Kirko's family. They were such a big family. I was really not part of them. So I'd be really sensitive to the situation. They would have like 40 people in the house that I didn't know. Uh, that's where I attribute a lot of that to. Um, I don't know. How do you listen to me say nonsense all night, Mom? For, I, I don't even know. I can't mm. even listen to myself after, what? like, say like Monday. Monday, Monday. Yeah, Monday. Four classes, four classes in a classes. row. Oh, I try to stay away. I think it's insane. <laughs> from him, from I, you. I think, Mom, it, it's like if Dylan was like, I'm going to open an accounting firm inside, like, Metallica's practice studio. <laughs> you know, that's what it would be. Like, let me, to so the office is trying to conduct business during those classes it's nearly impossible no well you know what I tune it out but I think it's important that you do a lot of talking during your class because yeah. some classes kind of sound a little boring well, yeah, you guys should just be you have to ice. you should yeah. have a soundproof situation it, it would be nice yeah it would be, it would nice. be that, nice that would be yeah it. yeah sometimes I just block it out yeah I, I don't even yeah. know because I have to do it yeah because no, I, absolutely. I, everything I do in class, I'm, it's spontaneous, but I'm making it, it's a process to 
put people into I don't want to say a trance but put them into a rhythm and if you don't that's why I yell at them if they don't come in on time if they're not ready mm -hmm. because then I've they're missing steps and I can't get them into the rhythm and when they're in the rhythm they perform better they do a lot better they're uh, they're less likely to get injured uh, everything works out better but it's repetitive it's a it's an order that I have to do it in so if you listen to me do it four times you're just like shut up already I mean no, no, I've never said that. No. I know you haven't yeah. said that. That's yeah, well, I don't think they have. I think they feel they like, they it. like it because I feel that's I think you make them feel important. Okay, well that's good to yeah. know. They are important. Yeah. No, I know they are. They're. Mm. Uh, yeah. I'm talking about everybody in yeah. there. I mean, I, yeah. I thank them all the time. It's very important that they push and get results, mm. and uh, that they don't build up so much stress that they do something bad get parking tickets for no reason. Shit, I got one this morning. Oh, God. Dylan, they, were there parking tickets, Mom, when I grew up? They were par not not as bad as today. Yeah, they Did were parking tickets. Did you have to tickets. move the, no. the car? Was I, there a street I, cleaner? I don't think, you know what, I don't think so, but I'm not sure. I don't really remember. There used to be a parking utility, mm -hmm. and then the rumor is when it was changed to an authority, their role changed where it became income generating and I say this all t they do nothing this city yeah. I, I love everybody at City Hall um, you're doing what you can because there's so many contradictions but the parking authority they would have to admit is the most efficient part of the government ever right there there's nothing that is that efficient they have the best technology they know how to give you tickets all the time they're thinking about putting Weight scales in the parking places up, and it's just to know automatically when your car's moved or not. No other, uh, <laughs> no other program is like that. Not even schools. Imagine schools had the innovation. They're better. They're innovating faster than Apple, Google combined. Hoboken Parking Authority is going to be publicly traded. Thank you so much for coming on down. Oh, well, thank you for having me. I enjoyed it. Tell them out there, mom, to like it, subscribe to it. Oh, please su subscribe. And tell them that I'm the next Jimmy Fallon. And Mike is the next Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> you got it. All right, guys.